Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist. Today we are painting this adorable cowboy snowman. So this gives you an idea of what it looks like when we do it live in the class. So we do it in a much larger scale, but we have a really cute version for y'all as well that comes in a nine by 12 with our painting kit that ships out to your home. And we make it very fun and easy with a traceable and all the supplies that you need. So again, I wanted to give you this big visual so you know what we're gonna be working on today. And then let's go ahead and talk about our traceable line art. So it's gonna be I'm gonna scoot, <laughs> maybe, hold on. All right. I'm on a wooden floor, so I'm catching a spot here. All right, so this is the line art that we provide with our kit here. Very cute, everything that you need. And then we're gonna actually go through the uh, transfer process today for you and show you how to do that. But helpful hands to begin with before you get started. And again, all of this is in the kit that you need. I mean, everything. So I think, yeah, we do everything pretty much except for just the water that you need to get to clean your brushes, but everything else is provided. So helpful hints here with your transfer paper, dull gray side faces up, the shiny black side faces the canvas. I only, I start by just taping this down, the first, the transfer paper, then I'm gonna tape down the uh, line art. I always leave the sides free and clear so that I can lift up and check my work as I go. That way I make sure that I get every line traced. So that's really important because it is pretty much impossible to come back and line this up exactly in the same place. Again, you'd probably have to end up doing some freehanding on your own. So again, just check everything really carefully before you go ahead and lift everything off and then you'll be all set. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and place this down. We are going to switch over to an aerial view so that you get a really nice, well-lit uh, close-up shot of the work while we paint. So without further ado, I'm gonna switch a little footstool and then switch everything over here. Oh. All right. Give me a second here, I'm gonna get situated. Check everything out. All right. Okay. So, with your happy dog, with your kit, you've got your paint. Yours will be all brand new in a lovely painter like this. And then mine's. I always try to use it. Like I've already done one painting with this, so you can see you have a lot left over. That's pretty nice. So I'm gonna to try to use that app. You've also got some plates here nearby and I went ahead and started with a little bit of white and black. Got the model over here as a reference to look at while I paint. And then I've got all my supplies out here, your napkins, your water, and we've got your brushes here. This is going to be mama. This is going to be little buddy. This is going to be a little bit. And then there's a little palette knife with this kit too. And it also comes with the pencil and permanent marker here, just in case. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with that trace first. So tracing is really simple. You're basically just going to make a line over exactly what I have down here on the surface area. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started. You're just gonna follow those lines. Just trace right over the top. You can definitely start to see how it becomes important to be able to check your work. So see how you can lift up and check and go, okay, that's how much I've done. But sometimes it's kind of hard to see like what you trace and what you still need to do. We're just gonna continue on here.
little eyes, little carrot nose, or big carrot nose. He's kind of got a big carrot nose, doesn't he? Sweet smile. Our scar. Those little buttons with her actually going to be like little blocks that we picked up and placed in his snow belly. Little branches. And you can see we have a little bit of shading that we have here too for you. I'm going to wait and do all that shading at the very end. It's just a nice little reference as we start to paint to kind of know where some of that shading goes. Just some extra little help. Get that whole belly in there. Put the snow here. All right, we have this rectum little horizon line across the back. And some delicate little winter trees here in the background. Little branch that's peeking up in the side. We'll actually I'll teach you a freehanded move to do these at the end too, because many times this could kind of get covered over a little bit here too, but it's nice to have the difference. A sketch here. And some winter breath and those winter trees. All right, let's check our work. All right, so we've got that's that little curve there, which is not a big deal, but we have our two trees, a little brush. So we've got all of our hat, all of our lines. It's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and talk about some of this shading. So there's a little bit of delicate shading here. This is optional, but I'm going to shade in the same way. It'll actually transfer really well if you hold the pencil more parallel to this line art and actually just kind of rub on the side. A little bit of shadow in here. Again, this isn't really completely necessary. It's just a little extra, extra help, extra visual help to kind of remember where Shading comes in and we kind of remember, oh, a little bit of gentle shading here. A little bit of gentle shading here. And then we've got some shading in here too. 
All right, so we're good. Let's go ahead and look and see how that looks. Okay, see how that looks, how it looks just like shading. Very light and delicate. We just love it. All right, so we have a little bit of this happening here too. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Just follow it along. Perfect. All right, so I think I've got a pretty good amount of shading done. So I think we're good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and place this off to the side. And then we'll go ahead and lift off here. And then this can really just go in the trash. And um, the permanent marker is here for things that I like to kind of have bleed through the paint. So that like we're gonna do a nice light wash for our sky over the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and like if I wanna do my little branches here, I can do that and do a little bit of that over the surface there. And again, this is optional. You can keep it with just this light line work if you want. So I'm just gonna do a little bit here to give you a reference. Other places I like to have this, like the eyes are really helpful. So, cause we're gonna do a light wash of that light gray or white for the snowman. So it's kind of nice to not lose our eyes, lose those features. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all the features here of the face. And the smile. This just makes it a lot easier for beginners. I'm gonna go ahead and line this out. Cute little flat buttons here. Okay, the outer part of the flags. I'm going to do these sort of branches here too. Right. So when that's going to be kind of light, and this is also going to be light, so I'm not going to do a firm hard line on that, but this gives me the main iconic shape and a firm pattern so that even if we do a light wash of paint, it's still going to bleed through. And again, that's just a nice little trick for beginners. So again, optional, but it is helpful if you want to make sure that you absolutely do not lose your trace there. Okay, so now we've got our water nearby. We have our brushes. I'm going to save the palette knife work till the very end. And let's see here. To begin with, when your brushes are fresh, of course, mine are old and let's call them lab. They're pre loved, um, but yours will be brand new. So my recommendation here would be to go ahead and place them into the water, give them a little rinse that'll help with their flexibility, and then just lightly pat dry here and then that way they will be flexible and easy to use. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let's see here, decisions, decisions. 
how do I want to start? Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with my sky here a little bit first. So we've got some bright sunshine peeking in. And so I'm going to take my primary yellow. Now, when your paint is brand new, you will have a silver foil liner here that you're going to have to remove. I've been using mine for a little bit, so mine's already removed there. So I've got that. And then I'm going to go ahead and pre-mix the next shape. I'm going to have and be working um, from my yellows to this beautiful turquoise in the sky. But next up, I'm going to add a little bit more warmth maybe to this yellow. So let's grab some cadmium yellow, have that nearby. Make sure you see what's in the shirt. There's that. And then let's mix up some of that turquoise. So that's going to be our viridian. And then let's get some primary cyan blue nearby. I'm going to take little buddy and go ahead and mix up some of that turquoise. So we've got that ready to go when we need it. So right off the bat, that's Viridian in white. Very pretty. I'm going to add a little touch of that primary cyan blue to it. And then we went right to turquoise. So that's quite lovely. I'm going to add a little bit more white to lighten it up quite a bit. And then we've got quite a bit there to use. We'll go ahead and kind of squeegee out the excess paint there. Place that in the water, rinse off. Dry off here. All right now, I'm going to take my mama brush and I'm going to combine a little bit of that primary yellow and that cadmium yellow and the white. We're going to work those two together, or three rather white, cadmium yellow, primary yellow, all three together. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of water. All right, I'm going to do a light wash here across the top. We've got our beautiful sunlight peeking through here. I'm going to have that coming in across the top of the sky. I can add a little bit of water to help make that paint really flow into the canvas. Now you can see here like this is beautifully bleeding through here because again we don't want to lose our trace so that's working wonderfully. And of course this is such a light color even our work that looks like just graphite is also just bleeding through. So that's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of work this into the top and a little bit of water into the mix to help it really flow into all the pores of the canvas. All right, so that gives a nice section of that bright sunshine coming through. Now I'm going to go ahead and rinse out here. Well, I'm going to work into some of this beautiful turquoise color. And I've got some of this kind of flowing into the sky a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit more white. I'm going to lighten up a lot more here. Lightly place that into the sky. Diagonal downward stroke, just kind of pulling down into that sunshine. Little strokes of that. Kind of light streaks across. Very pretty. Now I'm going to grab a little bit more of the blue. We're going to add some intensity to this, darken it up a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and just 
lightly come across here, a little bitty bumps. It's almost like there's a little bit of a, a hint of maybe mountains in the background. It's very subtle. And I wouldn't worry too much about lost lines in here. Again, we're gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to freehand that on. Like if it gets too obscured, no worries, we're gonna easily freehand that on later on too. And you can also let it set up and dry and use your Sharpie as well, which is easier for beginners. this all the way down to that horizon line here. And same thing here on the other side. And crisscross the brush back and forth. Crisscross back and forth here. Add a little bit more water to help that paint really flow into the surface area. Because it can be a little bit of that, you get that dry brush and bring it closer. And then that water, see, it really helps it flow into the pores of the canvas. That's really helpful in there. We'll use the line edge of the brush to smooth out that horizon line there. We'll crisscross back and forth. Now we're gonna add a little bit of some hints of different colors here. So we're gonna mix up. We still have a little bit of this primary cyan blue. We're gonna add just a teeny, teeny touch of black to that. Kind of a dusky dark slate blue and a little bit of white to that too. And we we'll have to kind of push that in. Back and forth. Let's grab a little bit more of that slight blue and then just kind of push back and forth, and crisscross side to side. The purple might so get into the hat and keep that shape nice and clean. And then let's go ahead and grab just a little bit of pure white on our brush. I'm just going to crisscross that back and forth. Softly blending that in. And a little bit of this white going across here on the other side. I'm going to rinse out a little bit here because I've got a lot of blue in there. And we're going to dry off. And then I'm going to get a little bit of just some pure white here. 
I'm just gonna softly put this right. I'm just gonna softly come in over the top corner in here. That's it right. And just pick up like a little tiny, see a little touch of white on the end of the brush. And then we're just going to do light, light little taps on the top of the mountain head. Gentle hand. Like if I can even barely touching. I'll go up a little triangle motion and then it down. Oh, looks very pretty. Okay. Now we're going to come down with our snow here. So a lot more of this white and then a little tiny touch of that primary cyan blue. And teeny tiny touch of black. And do a really light light in the gray, but a little touch of primary cyan blue and then mostly white because so we want it to look like it's white, but it has a little bit of a shadow in there. So I'm going to come up next to this base and just kind of crisscross into it just a little bit. A light transition back and forth. And lightly back and forth here. And again, this is mostly white, titanium white. And then that little bit of Mars black. And then just a tiny touch of our primary cyan blue. I'm be really careful getting next to this little branch on here. But one thing you can see that's really nice, again, we have the permanent marker coming around the shape. So if you have a little bit of paint come over the top, then it bleeds through so you don't lose that wonderful shape to be able to paint into that later with more detail. Mix up a little bit more, grab some more white, a little touch. So that primary cyan blue. And a teeny tiny touch of black. Very little. A little bit goes a long way. Grab a little bit of water to help that flow into the background there. And just little crisscrosses back and forth. And it's going to smooth out. Back and forth like this, long horizontal strokes. And we still have this little line that's showing through nicely. And then head in here around that branch. And if you do want to be a bit more precise around that little branch, you can always come in and use 
your little bit brush or your little buddy, if you feel a bit more comfortable using a smaller brush around those tinier shapes. And we'll just hop back and forth and scrub a little bit of water. And that makes that paint a bit more fluid. And again, a little bit of water. And a little bit of water on there too can also thin out the paint enough to where you can come back in and make that paint a little bit more translucent to where you can see your lines too. If you're you just covered something you didn't want to cover, you can add a little bit of water to it and make it a bit more translucent again. Again, I'm pushing into this is my titanium white with a touch of primary cyan blue and a touch of black. We're gonna put the snow all the way down to the base. And we've got a little bit of water to help make that paint fluid and really flow into the space. All right, very nice. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our little fatty brush. We're gonna go ahead and rinse out. Dry off. Let's grab a little bit of that primary cyan blue. a little bit more. We're darkening that up to create a little bit more of a shadow. And come in next to that edge. Around here. And a little bit of water helps that paint flow. And this is where that permanent markers really are fun because we want this to all bleed through. We'll do a quick little wipe here, get some of that excess blue off, and I grab some white. And we're going to start to work in softer white into the middle. We're going to soft your water here into the middle. And see, it's still bleeding through. And if you're covering it, remember your water, you can make your paint more translucent so that you don't lose your sweet face there. You don't lose those features. Mine's still bleeding through. We're all good. And then get a carrot. And I'm just kind of sweeping strokes around, softly blend, but we have a little bit of that darker blue shadow around the edge, and then it lightens up towards the center. And I got a little bit of water, a little bit more of this primary cyan blue. We're going to darken up again here. So this is our primary cyan blue, and with that white and tiny little touch of the black, very tiny touch there. This is what we use for the outline. And take this all the way around so that we've got nice contrast with our snowman and the background.
And I'm just going to work this darker bluish slate color all the way around here. And a little bit of water to help that flow a little bit more. Like making a big parenthesis shape right there. And let's take it all the way around the base. All right, great work. Let's do a quick wipe. We're going to get rid of that excess blue. We're not a complete wash there. And let's just grab some pure white now. And we're going to start to softly blend this pure white into that. The key here is wet paint to wet paint. So you don't want this to set up and dry too much, or if they'll have a hard line between the two. So you do want to work quickly between the two. And if for some reason this does set up and dry too quickly before you get a chance, just I would go back and just completely re-wet and redo this wetness here with the blue, and then just work quickly in with the white to softly blend between the two. And then a little bit of water certainly does help here as well. A little water here too, so that it's translucent over those buttons. I can still see that little twig peeking through. So I'm just washing over the top so I can have better flow with my brush stroke, smooth transition. Sweeping strokes back and forth, soft fade between that blue and the white. A little, I don't know what that is. Let's see. Oh. I don't know. No, we'll call it texture. It's fine. <laughs> I'm going to be using my palette knife here a little bit anyway. So we're just going to lean into that texture. All right. So we've got a really nice blend between the two there. And I'm going to go ahead and rinse out a little bit here. Dry off. We're going to take our little bit brush and we're going to grab just a little bit of just this primary cyan blue. A little bit of white. Quite a bit darker than this over here. And a little bit more of that shadow. And then I'm going to follow up a little bit with Little Buddy and just kind of lightly go over the top of that cream brush and lightly fade. So a little bit, a little bit brush and that darker cyan blue, primary cyan blue, a little bit of white. And then we're going over the darkness of it here. And a clean little buddy, and we're just doing a soft little wipe over there. Softly fade this too. Oops, I missed a spot in here. Let me mix up right in here. So funny. It's weird. You get when you get close up to your 
paint sometimes you just it's amazing you just don't see it in fact they you know it's often said that you should always take a few steps back from your painting just kind of look at it from afar and that reveals a lot I'm just going to have to take a breath get a different perspective that's a pretty good rule for life in general go back through a little bit Grab some of that darker primary sign in blue, kind of smooth in. Get some darker shadow in here. Big long circles, like a half circle stroke. And then I'm going to come back in with a little buddy. Soften that in, like a little bit of an overpaint over the top to make that transition a little bit softer, soft in between the two. A little wiggle in there. Little buddy again, slide right hand over the top. Right. It's looking good. Now I'm taking Little Buddy again and just some pure white. We're going to get a pop of that pure white right over the top. Really light this up. Get some highlights here. Right next to that little branch. I'm going to take a little bit again. And that darker blue and just go over the top again. Soft transition. Lightly graze over the top there. Lightly touch over the top here too. And a little bit of our pure white. I want to pure a bit of white. Right now. I'm going to wash this white over the top here again. Brighten that base up a little bit. And then a circular pattern. All right, really pretty. All right, we're going to go ahead and rinse out here. And then let's uh, shift gears a little bit and work on our hats here. Actually, I'm going to do this bottom part of the snow. Woman's prerogative, change my mind. <laughs> I forgot about that little part down there. All right, so I've got Mama again. I'm going to pick up some of that. Primary cyan blue. Add a white in there too. A little bit of water. 
I think I'm going to get that little shadow. I push that in, and that little crisscrosses back and forth here. It's out, dry off a little bit and now of the white that we're going to go ahead just kind of crisscross that in back and forth. Very lovely. Let's go ahead and rinse off and dry off now. I think we'll go into the pouch. All right, so we need to get some very different colors happening here. I've got another plate that comes with the kit, and we need to mix up some brown. So we've got our cadmium orange. Do a little pea size amount of that. Make this close here. And then we'll go ahead and do, you know what? I need another bit of that for the nose. So I'll get that went in wrong. And then we have our Mars Black. I actually have a little bit of that over here. And I still have some cadmium orange over here too. So I'll use some of that as well. Okay, so I'm going to use Little Buddy. We're going to do a little tiny touch of the black. We're going to start with that tiny touch first. We're going to work that into our orange. And that creates our brown. And the more orange you add as a lighter brown. And then I'm going to get some different hues of this brown happening here by picking up some of this cadmium orange. And a little bit of that white too, for like more of an attacky color. I want some of that to work with. And a little bit of that primary yellow. We had some of that left over, so I'm going to pack that on there too. That way we can play in here. So we've got primary yellow we can play into. Our brown and our white mixes with this lovely kind of khaki color, and we still have our brown nearby. So lots of fun stuff to mix with here. So I'm going to come in with this lighter brown. I'm going to go to that orange in there too. And we're going to work this into this little section here. In there. A little line of that lighter color there. And squeegee out that color. So as much of a little rinse out here. I'm going to switch over to mine a little bit brush. I'm going to do this dark with brown. And I'm going to do a little wiggle here. And then a little wiggle into here to wiggle out here. Bring the brush kind of on the side. Grab a little bit of water if you need to to help that flow more into the space. And a little bit of this, have a little bit of orange mixed in there, kind of warm that up. 
And we're going to push this into this little top part of the hat. And then I want a little bit more of this dark brown to work with. So I'm going to grab some black and that orange again. We're going to mix up more of that. I'm going to come in over the top here. A little bit of water too to help spread it out. Now, if you need a little twirl, let me show you what that does. It'll twirl into the paint here. That'll rotate the head of the brush into a nice fine point that allows you to more easily reach into tinier little areas, have a little bit more precision and control there. This little section here on top is more of a highlight. So we're just going to come up underneath, or sorry, just underneath that. Work it around. And see, so you've got a little bit of dry brush happening like that. So you get a little bit of water. That really helps that paint flow into that surface area. And we can do a little bit of this like crisscross using the side of the brush parallel to the canvas to help kind of Feather out those brush strokes, get good coverage there over the top. All right, now we need to lighten up quite a bit. So I'm going to speed you out that paint in case we're going to use that. I'm going to rinse out a little bit, dry off. Now let's come in with some white. Let's add a little more white here and our yellow. I want this to be quite a bit lighter, just a tiny touch of that khaki in there. Remember that khaki was our white and our brown. So yellow, white, brown. And let's go ahead and fill in here. And then up next to the sky, I'm going to do a little bit of brown just to go ahead and take contrast and hit that again with that yellow and that candy color, softly blend the two. You can kind of hit back and forth between the two a little bit as well. Like I'm going to come back into this darker brown, softly blend back in over the top of that yellow. It creates a nice soft blend. Yellow, and a push there. Right now, hit it with a little bit more white, a little bit, and yeah, just get all of that here over the top. And then you can you know, keep this like chunky if you want, or you can kind of softly come in and lift that back in, like color to color. A 
Let's make sure it goes wet paint to wet paint. Walking this up a little bit, so I have a little bit more black. Now I can uh, brown up a little bit and kind of create a darker shadow in here. And from here on this other side. And I'm going to that lighter brown, just kind of lightly. A little more of that orange hue, and then kind of light up next to that. Off, we're just kind of round it out like little parentheses to each side. Rinse okay. out. And uh, we've got a little bit of this orange left, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll work that into the nose. And if it has a little tiny touch of brown, that is okay. I can do a little bit of that shadow. And we can do a little twirl that helps us have a fine point looking to this really small area. And let's grab a little touch of that brown. Let's go down with the base. One side. And then we're going to lighten up a little bit here on top. So I've got that a little bit of that yellow and that white. I'm just going to grab that orange and mix that in, make kind of a peach. And then we're going to push and then pull on, push and pull on. Over the top and push pull down the little strips that feels like little parentheses. And then we'll pull again into that There's my lightly outline here. Right, and I'll turn that handle more over to the side. And we're going to pick up more of that orange and just lay that in over the top. And we'll get more of that yellow. Get more of that primary yellow. Let it fly. 
here why. Quite lovely. Right, now we're going to come in with some red for the scarf. Cadmium red. Well, kind of a cool red. So we're going to add a little bit of some primary magenta to this. And you are welcome to change the colors on these two. So if you want pink, you can always do a little bit of white with the primary magenta. And you can make a really cute little like pink scarf like that, which would be lovely. Or if you stick with more of the red, then that's going to be our cadmium red. This is a little bit brush here. I'm just working this in. And then I'm also going to use that brown to create a little bit of shadow in here as well. And a little bit of that brown will come in around those creases in the scarf. Have a chunky little outline here. And here. And this is that brown. We're going to work that in first. Way down. Have a little bit of water in that brown, just do little tiny fringes. Once off. All right, and let's go back into our cadmium red, primary magenta. We could do a little mix of both those to get a cool red. And you're going to start to work in while the paint's still wet. And I'll pick up a soft blend between that brown and the red. A little pull down here at the base, lift off with a light hand to get those little tiny fringes. And we're just going to fill in to that scarf. Again, this is our cadmium red, a little bit of that primary magenta. And then we can also hit with a little bit of that light pink that we mixed up. We're going to create a little highlight in our scarf. A little touch. Well, there's our titanium white and our primer magenta. Let's do a little touch there. A little touch there. Let's go ahead and rinse out. Now let's do our little branches. We're maybe running low on brown. So let's see. Let's get some more cadmium orange. Resize them out there again. Let's go ahead and grab some more cadmium yellow nearby. And some more primary yellow. We also have some of our Mars black here. We're going to mix that with our orange again. We're going to make our brown again. We have a lot more to work with. Let's do a little twirl into the paint so that we have a nice fine point to work with. And we're just going to go ahead and push into this little branch. And you can add a little bit of water to it too. And it helps it flow into that space. Okay. 
So we're going to start with that dark base of brown first, and then we'll follow up with some highlights with those lighter colors over the top. Again, a little bit of water helps. Well, we've got a space there. Let's start there. And we can do a little twirl to get a nice fine point. And the twirl loads it up and get the nice fine point again. Remember that branches are really imperfect and they have lots of little knots and imperfections. So if you're, you slip and have a little, whoops, you know, off to one side, that wouldn't really touch bad. I just want to look a little bit more natural. All right, got a great foundation there. Now we're going to rinse out. And we're going to take a little bit and pick up some titanium white here and a little bit of our yellow, primary yellow, and maybe that brown. So cadmium yellow, primary yellow, a little bit of brown and white. We have a nice light highlight here. And we're just going to pull up and just add this right on the top of the branch. Here. This little section a little over here. here. A little light here and here. A light here. And a little light here. And a light here. And a tiny little light here. And then And if you need to pause and back up and watch me go a little light here, a little light here, and just kind of echo what I do, you're more than welcome to do that. Do some of that little bits of reflective light here on this side as well. Little bits of reflective light here. So we've got that lighter color coming in. Good. Hold up and stop. Now I'm going to come in. Let's see. We're going to get a little bit more light here to that. Same mix we did highlights on the wood. A little twirl. And um, I'm going to do a little push into this circle here. I'll push into this circle and I'll push into this circle. And then I'm going to come back in with some black. 
We'll twirl into the black, Norse black. Taking the bottom section of this circle. Have a little bit of water if you need it. Makes it a little bit more fluid. Bring this all the way around. Oh, chunky circles. I'm going to wipe that off. I'm going to come back in with that light khaki color that we picked up. And I'm just going to do a little push here at the very top, like a little parentheses. Little parentheses. Little parentheses. Little parentheses. With that highlight right over the top there. All right now, a trick with the eyes, we're going to get to that next here. Easiest way to do the eye use the handle of the brush on your mama, biggest brush you've got. We're going to dip into just pure black paint. See, there it is on the top. And then you will press straight down over where that eye is. So there it is. That way, sometimes when people try to paint little circles of eyes, their eyes get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I will say they get a lot of personality that way. But this is a more precise way to just really have your eyes be the same size. And then we also have some reflective light that we're going to do over the top, but we're going to let this set up just a little bit. I'm going to come in with my uh, little bit brush here. And I'm just going to smooth down that top. You don't have to do this. I'm just trying to get that excess off. All right, now I'm going to do a little bit of a twirl here into the paint. Nice fine point. And then I'm gonna do my little happy face. We're gonna do that little up turn there, up turn. Nice big grin. A couple of things to pay attention to. My canvas is dry, so I can rest the weight of my hand on my pinky here to help stabilize my hand while I do this move. Another thing that you can do as a beginner, your kit came with a permanent marker. You can permanent marker on the eyes and the happy face, you know, those little details like that. It's a lot easier on if you need that, especially if you have a shaky hand. So that's nothing, nothing wrong with that. A little twirl here into the black. I'm gonna add a little, a little tiny touch here, a little black into here, a little. A little bit there. There. A little cross there. Across here, kind of like in parentheses, kind of echoing the shape of the hat and the wiggle around here. The piece of the hat there, a little more flat, just to kind of help re emphasize that. All right, now we have those little flash points in the eye. We have to be really careful. Now I will have to be, here's what I'm going to suggest to you. Actually, I'm going to work on branches a little bit and then come back to that because here's what I'm going to recommend. I'm going to recommend that you just absolutely let all of this be 100% dry and then you can come back in and do the flash points because if you try to do it with this too wet, then they can just become a blur and a blob of the white and the black and you don't want that. 
But I remembered I've got little trees I can work in. So I'm also going to give myself time <laughs> to let that set up and dry. And then we're gonna work on some of these fun little trees here in the background. Yay. Okay, so I'm gonna take my, take a little bit more of my Mars black and this brown here. We're gonna take some water and then work those two together. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of a twirl. And then here from the side, I'm just gonna push and we've got this branch that's coming in from the side. So a little push and then pull up and a diagonal. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to that because it's doing that dry brush, it's not covering. So a little bit of water helps that cover. And then lift off with a light hand. Make a little Y there. We'll go off the canvas too if you want. Yeah, a little twirl, gives you a nice fine point. A little bit of water helps it cover. Little twirl, and now on this side, we're going to add a bit more of this brown here. And it comes straight up. And then a little clockwise. The color branches off to the side. And we're also going to do this that little bit of just pull up straight from the bottom here where that horizon line is. Straight pulls. That looks like that brush coming up, and it's a bit stark over the top here. We're going to soften this up a little bit with some titanium white. Slightly kind of pull up over the top of that light, too. The quick little pulls up. So just push down and pull up. And we're coming in over the top of that light. Titanium white is right over the top. This is where we placed in our little pulls of brown. Now we're coming in with little pulls of white over the top and kind of soften it. A little bit of water, a little bit of light. I'm also going to come across here and kind of soften this horizon line a little bit with that kind of brownish white. A little bit of brown, a little bit of white with that brown. Do the same thing over here where we've got those like straight up little tiny trees. Winter trees. Just little tiny poles up here. We have a few kind of coming through here to like little spots of that. Here. So tiny pulls. And then we're going to take that white and softly come in over the top, little pulls of that.
So if I kind of push this back and forth with some of that white, cross that horizon line. I take my clean little budding brush and get a little bit too much brown. I'm going to grab a little bit more of this white and brush that across with. Uh, we fade that in. And again, a little bit of just this pure white, and I come right up next to that face. I do a light little cut in. And then something kind of crisscross this in here. And then over here on this side, while it's still wet, you want to also come in with that little bit of white, softly blend that in. And then a little bit of blue in here too with the white can also be pretty, just a little bit. A little tap, tap, tap. Go back and forth here, tap, 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 kind of crisscross a little bit. Now go that primary cyan blue with the white. Kind of do this over here too, a little crisscross back and forth and tap, tap, tap. And then a little bit of this back and forth. And then real light, this is my little buddy, real light here with the white. I'm going over those trees a little bit to kind of soften them. I don't want anything to be too stark, so I'm going a little bit over that with a little bit of white, just a little bit of dry brush white here. Soften that in the background. And same thing here, a little bit of white over that dark black. Put this white, soften it. A little bit of dry brush white. Break a little bit of white actually on the branches, then like a little tap of that pure white where it's like resting on the branches. Pop, pop, pop of white. We soften that out. Then rinse out. And I kind of like, I'm not really getting close to being done. I'm going to rinse out my little bit here. And then we just have that reflective light that can be done over the eyes. So, really delicate touch on this. We're going to take our little bit brush, smallest brush we've got. We're going to dip into the pure white. We just have a little teeny amount on the very tip top there. And then I'm just going to touch, I use my pinky to help brace my hand here. And on this side, I'm just going to barely touch on that side and the same side here on the other eye. Ta-da! And there it is. And it's done. And a little bit of white. And here, just a little highlight. Quick little drags. And then if you want, you can kind of softly come back into that too. Soft little paint right back into it. You can soften a little bit.
I do have a little double take here. One more little bit of wet underneath this hat. A little of that brown. All right, now keep in mind, this is my color printer that's here and it did have a little bit of a flaw with the blue that printed. So mine's not going to be as blue. I kept my snowman a little bit lighter and brighter. So I feel like we're really pretty much done with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sign off. And I think personally, it's much easier to use the permanent marker. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this here to sign. There it is. All right, we are finished. So again, all the supplies that you need for this beautiful class, the Cowboy Snowman, is on our website at tipsyartist.com. So if you have any questions, please leave them below. We'll be happy to help. And you'll have a beautiful rest of the day. Toodles. Much love.